As they get set down to take on a Virginia team that finished the year 23 and 10, 13 wins in ACC play. As we are off and running here with Reese Beekman. Yeah, we see Strong taking him and covering him. And on the other side of it, Stevens looks like he's going to check Murray for a while. Beekman's going to get it back on the wing. Five seconds to shoot, coughs it up into the corner. This is McNeely now out front. Murray had to hurry, didn't get it off. Pretty good set right there. Starting things off for Colorado State. The Rams with that attention to detail in terms of being able to watch the clock and it disappears on them. Clearly, clearly did not get that one off the start. But a typical Virginia possession though. Esquiro going right down to the shot clock. It's been a big part of the story. One of the better defensive teams. But just haven't had enough offensively for big stretches. Watch out. Wow. Corner three that time from Patrick Cartier. He can shoot that ball from long range also. Maybe a little anxiety. Those early game jitters. Beekman out front. This is McNeely. These two star guards for Tony Bennett and Virginia. And Clifford's going to be following McNeely around the half court. Into the corner. Back to McNeely. Three seconds to shoot. He spins, shoots the floater, missed it. The tip won't go as Jordan Miner had a chance. And we're still looking for our first points as Virginia comes up empty again. This is Cartier, the graduate senior. Gets it back from Stevens. Great what a up. pass inside. Hesitation and that interior Virginia defense. And Spiro, we talk a lot so far. We've spoken a lot about, you know, you mentioned mine and McNeely, Murray, Beekman. We almost forgot about that guy. Watch Dunn, number 13. The reaction right there to help out. Beautifully done. McNeely sets him up for a timing block. Ryan Dunn, all defensive team in the ACC, led the conference in blocks, one of the premier defensive players in the country. Opening couple of minutes here in Dayton. Still scoreless, Virginia and Colorado State. Murray into the paint, nearly lost it. Three straight possessions where they take that shot clock all the way down to one. The spinning fade and done. Somehow sticks it for Virginia. Beautiful separation. Getting that shot off. That's the third time in a row now we've seen the shot clock come into play early on for Virginia. Here's Joel Scott trying to create some space. Goes right into the chest of Dunn. And unable to finish. Yeah, that's the way to go after a defender. Like that move by Scott to kind of push his chest into Dunn's Colorado State top 20 in the country in field goal percentage so an interesting matchup against this Virginia Whoa. defense Beekman misses and Nick Clifford, Clifford just dribbled it right off turnover hand. just dribbled it off his hand watch the separation on this one here he's going to end up all the way out there because he sets him up and the key right there is not only with the body, but making sure your plant foot, a right-handed shooter, steps away and plants that left foot strongly to the floor to get that shot off. This Virginia team unranked in the AP poll entering the season. They got off to the 9-1 start. Had that eight-game winning streak, middle of January to middle of February. Wow, another shot clock opportunity. Wow, down to two again. Mm. That was Beekman on the miss. I know you want to use the, sheet, the clock to your favor, but maybe a little bit more attention to detail, starting something strongly at seven seconds or so. Colorado State still looking for its first points. Uh, done is all it's a turnover. Oh, now they're going to say keep it here. Last touch by Virginia with 16 seconds to shoot. Watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Download now. And stay up to date on all the action. Get down to Stevens. Boy, little hesitation. Pretty maneuver by Scott. And finally, the Rams get their first points. And when you let that hesitation come into play on the offensive end, it's a smart play to let shot blockers kind of drift by you, especially when they've committed too early. Clifford is just all over McNeely. 
Murray on a three, not that time. He's a really good three-point shooter, 46% on the season. But he's not the only one who has to shoot for them to win. Remember, McNeely has to get on track from three also. They just can't rely on Murray alone. Virginia, one of its first six if you've just joined us. And Colorado State, meantime, one of four at the start. What a pass inside. Cartier to Scott. That's the second little bunny he's missed. Yeah, and that's the second time that Dunn has come over to be a factor defensively with that rotation. They like to wall up, basically. Virginia, they're really helpful on the weak side to the strong side. There's your shooting numbers. Jimmy, we expected this one to be a, a grinder. I hope it's not the first team to 10 wins. <laughs> <laughs> Done! <laughs> Pretty little leader for Virginia. He's always a factor, both ends of the floor. Just love the way that Dunn figures out what to do to help his team get some points. We took that next step. And his evolution this year did the sophomore. Didn't start a single game last year as a freshman. And what a player he's become for Tony Bennett. Boy, hard drive to the cup. Unable to put it down that time was Clifford. Colorado State holding possession Sunday. Weren't quite sure what to expect, whether they'd even be here, Jimmy, in the field. Haven't had too many selection Sundays like that when you consider what they accomplished at the national title in 2019, but no tournament wins, Jimmy, since. Where Stevens off balance bangs in a triple. Stevens. Really need a big night from Stevens. They sure do. Really his first opportunity to get things going. Over five and a half minutes or so. This is the 152nd start in Isaiah Stevens' career. Just incredible. McNeely pulls, misses, and a rebound by Joe Palmer, who's checked into the game. Graduate senior for Nico Medved. Yeah, watch the talent right here. Just a simple pull up. He's quick, though. He'll break you down off the dribble, too, once he starts hitting a couple from the outside. Be interesting as this progresses too. Look at the first team all Mountain West selection this year. The Stevens, but McNeely not really finding the range in terms of get, being able to get his comfortable shot off yet. So let's see if they can find one. Nice job by Clifford so far, Ding him up. Blake Buchanan and Jake Groves have checked into the game now for Tony Bennett in Virginia. Also Andrew Rohde. Here he is with the ball in his hands. Watch those slip cuts, Spiro. They look to set it up off the pick and roll. McNeely slices in, unable to get the rim, the bounce, and Virginia now is two of nine here at the start. Ryan Dunn, two of two shooting. Good hand. Rest of Virginia, he... 0 of seven. Boy, Stevens dribbled himself into trouble. Yep, after that strip out front by Beekman, got him in a little carryover effect. Third Colorado State turnover. Beekman. I think that little pull-up jump shot in the lane for him should start to work or a floater. Rody elevates long mid-range J no. And Virginia's offensive struggles continue. Watch for Palmer, number 20 in green. He's a three-point shooter on the floor now. Boy, Jalen Lake, good looking stroke. The junior Texas native. Two points in their Mountain West semifinal loss to New Mexico. Didn't shoot the ball very well, but a big basket early. A good defense that time against Beekman. Yeah, he had 16 against Nevada, so he can score. Oh, good luck. Clifford. That's good. It's almost time for a Tony Bennett timeout, but he's going to let his guys try to play through this. Just haven't gotten on track at the offensive end, and that's primarily because the green shirts are really sticking to them pretty well. Eight straight points for the Rams as they've opened up this six-point lead. Rody McNeely, that's good. There's a rhythm shot right there, Spiro, the way he came across from the left side of the floor, getting his footwork underneath them and get some real good lift 
McNeely had 23 points in their ACC semifinal loss to NC State. That overtime finish. Clifford. Beautiful. Chisels into the paint, high off glass. And once again, a guy going to his strong hand, the right hand. You got to force him left. And that was a beauty of a drive, too. He just took him one-on-one -on -one right out there, 17 feet away. Clifford, first three years of his collegiate career at Colorado. First year in Nico Medved's program. Shot clock at nine. Boy, Beekman walking a tightrope on that baseline. Tough finish inside. That was an extraordinary finish just then in terms of, I never thought he was going to get to the opposite side of the rim. Somehow managed with that last little explosion. Nice luck. Boy, it's Beautiful just... lead pass. It's Scott. Uh, Clifford's on a nice little roll in terms of setups and defensively playing a really good all-around game so far for 10 minutes of action or so. See the points in the paint discrepancy as we come up on the midway point of this opening half, Virginia and Colorado State with the winner moving on to take on Texas. McNeely from deep. That's a three. Well, I think, I think Clifford was a little shocked that that ball got in his hands and released that quickly. Once again, though, driving it towards the middle and the baseline to kick it back. This is Scott. Boy, suddenly this Rams offense has come alive. Jimmy, we didn't have any points the first five, six minutes. Now they can't miss. The score was 4-2 at one point. <laughs> These two teams have a nice walking. cut. Boy, McNeely turned back. No goaltend. Virginia fans incredulous. Here comes Scott. I don't know if that ball was going to reach the rim, though. Maybe a good point. Look at the cuts. Boy, they are really, really sharp cuts to the basket. Here comes Clifford. Boy, he is heating up. A quick timeout taken by Colorado State. Hey, let's go back to this last sequence. Gene Steratore telling us that he thought this should have been a yeah. goal hand and that from that vantage point. it was. Yeah, I, may, I stand corrected. I think that was going to reach the rim. And here's that drive to the basket. Nice little flip shot. But the people might be asking Spiro, too, why didn't they review that goaltending call? Because there was no call. You have to have a goaltending call on the floor. Then you can go review that. Oh, what a big old screen that was, huh? And Miner just stepping up. That'll get the guards thinking when they cross pressure your backcourt. That was Tavi. Jackson who bore the brunt of that screen. Meantime, it's Beekman drawing some contact and he's going to get to the free throw line. Uh, Tony's games live. Uh, Watches him on tape a little bit. Watches him on tape after. A little too emotional. Coach Bennett. We'll say hello to him when he's watching it on tape. Interesting also the, the tie between Tony Bennett and Nico Medved, also Nico and Tony Sr. Just a really interesting dynamic between these two coaches. Dick Bennett, no doubt, a lot of emotions swirling inside of him. Into the paint here, Palmer outside to Lake. Yeah, once again now, Virginia doing what Tony Bennett just told John a little bit. They're looking out there and they're stopping that initial catch and drive. Good little slip right here for the basket, but they recovered fairly well. That was Bemba, and then it's knocked out of bounds. Last touch here with 20 seconds to shoot. Another look at Bemba. And knocked out of bounds. I think he may have been touching the line before he threw it off the Virginia player. This is Palmer. He's yep. going to fire a three. A little bit too much off the back of the rim. That's what he does, though. He's in that in the game to look for his long-range shot. He shoots about 70% of his shots are threes. And the winner of this one advances to take on Texas. Beekman. But way too much from Groves. 
This is Palmer. Watch out. And now both teams getting sloppy with it. Well, you can get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament at NCAA.com. There's Nico Medved pacing up and down. We asked him about you know, the seeding, which is a disappointment certainly to some people in the program. But look, we're here. It's a positive group of kids. Jimmy quickly turning the page. Yeah, and I like the way they came out with their, you know, after we got past that first five minutes, they started to light up the offense a little bit. But now it's stagnant again. A little turnaround shot for McNeely won't go. And again, this Virginia offense, the wow. trout. Stevens leaning up and in, and the rebound is pulled by Dunn. See how fast Stevens can get to his spot on the floor. Like lightning. Just didn't convert. Beekman trying to turn the corner, extends yeah. and misses. And may have gotten bumped on that one to the mm. basket. Rebound by Bemba. We gave Medved some good minutes off the bench during that Mountain West tournament. Giving him some good work on the glass. But both of these offenses have stalled <laughs> long <laughs> two. Thinking. We went 4-2. We stalled it to a 4-2 start of this game. Then they had a little run out, both teams, and now they're stalling again. Credit the defensive effort. you got to be a positive somewhere. Beekman wow. misses at the rim. Oh, oh baby. Out. He took a good shot there. Jackson gets up pretty quickly. Boy, Jackson took that hard screen earlier. He's gotten banged around so far in this first half. His last three years at Colorado. And he's going to get a well-deserved rest here as we are inside of seven minutes left before halftime. So Virginia's offensive struggles. Ryan Dunn, two of two shooting. The rest of the Cavaliers, Jimmy, two of 17 so far. Yeah, and a combined nine misses for both team teams right now. So... These guys are just like bellying up with the ball. This is what Tony Bennett spoke to John about that last time he spoke to him, trying to figure out how to stop those straight line drives to the basket. This is Cartier inside, tough shot, had to reach around Groves. It's loose, and Groves rips it back. It's going to be a reaching foul against Cartier. 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern on TNT, True TV, and Max. So great to have you with us. First night of the first four. Spiro Ditas, Jim Spinarkel, John Rothstein, our producer Jason Ross, Matt Plundo, our director. The rest of our terrific True TV crew. An honor to have you with us. Wide open there. Nice little ball fake. Good recovery by Strong. Here's Dunn. Guarded by Cartier. Now to Murray. Eight on the timer. Murray to the box. Leans up. He missed it. Nothing is easy, Spiro, on both ends here. Both teams challenging defensively. And we're stuck on 18 to 14. It's a Colorado State team that began the year 13 and 1. Climbed to as high as 13th in the AP poll. But then their season hit a bit of a, a lull early part of January, that 11 and 9 stretch. Boy, beautiful work on the interior. That's Joel Scott. Yeah, they gave the indication that they might run a double team on that one, but they were a little late on the help. You just can't give him that much time to bounce you around and finish the shot. Scott, the Division II Player of the Year last season at Black Hill State. It was McNeely on a misfire. Watching some slice cuts now off the top of the key here. There's a slice off the top with Stevens setting a screen. Cartier, the graduate senior. Boy, he goes left hand. Little trickery in his back pocket. Tony Bennett wants a timeout as the Rams have opened up their biggest lead of the night. Eight point game on True TV.
State doing much of that, most of their damage down in the paint. And they have 16 paint points. And watch the back down here. Is anybody going to help? Nope. They let him go one on one on an island. He's pretty tricky in terms of getting that hesitation shot off. And then we look at the same thing a little fake coming down. And Cartier just goes to that left handed flip. Let's see if Tony Bennett makes some adjustments because he's a master. And I mean a master at being able to make some adjustments on the fly. Jim, in a lot of ways, you know, Bennett kind of a, a victim of his own success with the standard he has set. Just an incredible one at the helm of this Virginia program. But all the talk about the who's not getting the tournament win since that national championship. You can, you can feel the urgency within this program to get this one tonight as Beekman misfires from deep. And the Rams control the glass. One of the things Virginia does, too, is they send two guys to the glass most times but three go back so you're not seeing many second chance opportunities because of the way they set their decent defense up after the shot a little hole going through the lane here that's one of those cuts that colorado state runs so well well you saw that field goal shooting number for virginia just five for 23 Cavaliers team that avoided disaster in the ACC quarterfinals. They fought off that pesky 11 seeded Boston College team in overtime. But uh, their overtime luck ran out in that semifinal loss. NC State, Michael O'Connell, that crazy bang. <laughs> it was a fabulous shot, wasn't it? it was, uh, the athletic trainers busy here working on Cartier. But, you know, Jimmy, it's just one of those years for Virginia. You consider the blowout losses. They had six 20-point losses this year. 34-point loss at Virginia Tech. 25-point loss at Duke. They had six games this year where they failed to score 50 points. Well, that's, right now it's shaping up as one of those games. Clifford's going to reset as we cross the four-minute mark. They have the post up again. They're looking to get it back to the post. Clifford, he's got a pull. That was a much better set, wasn't it, defensively by Virginia just then? They did not let the ball go into the post. They defended the perimeter, and they ended up getting a defensive rebound. No coach is going to complain about that set. Tony Bennett going a little bit deeper into his bench. Dante Harris has checked in. The redshirt junior that's done on a turnaround. And Virginia just cannot buy a basket. But well, boy, they look up. Jimmy, they're only down eight miraculously with three minutes left in the half. Cartier from deep. Splash. A little step out. When you look at him as a three-point shooter, you don't think at 6'8", he's going to step out and let it rip, but he does. And he's very consistent when he when he shoots the basketball at 36% on the season. Cartier, the transfer, former Division II player at Hillsdale College. And the graduate senior has given the Rams an 11-point lead. Beekman. Whoa, watch out. Look out. A little bit of a head fake by Harris. Two men who know each other awfully well. Nico Medved and Tony Bennett. Shot clock again down to single digits as McNeely is bailed out here. Tripped up to the deck. I like the way McNeely mixes it up though too. When he feels and senses he's getting the ball and the guy's encroaching on him to stop his three. Puts the ball on the floor and tries to make something happen. Recent NCAA tournament disappointments for Tony Bennett. You think back to last year, Virginia, the four seed in the South, upset by the 13 seed Furman in that one point opening round stunner. How does this one end tonight? McNeely wow. trying to force the issue. He's good. And he's still down. He's down. Yeah, I think he took a shot to the right side of his face. Scott inside. Officials are going to stop it here with McNeely just getting to his feet. Beautiful dime underneath. It was Clifford on the pass and Scott the recipient. 
as Colorado State pushes to a 13-point lead. And watch, he never got into really good position to get that shot off, and somebody's arm is going to come down, and it's probably done. Does it look like his own teammate got him, right? Looks like friendly fire. Yep. So McNeely, such a tough kid, is going to stay on the floor here for Tony Bennett, Virginia. As they desperately try to figure out their offensive woes, 14 first half points, Jimmy, with 153 remaining in a half. Just incredible. Let's see if Beekman could go by somebody. Beekman, nice step up the hedge. This is Groves, corner three. That's no good. And Clifford tracks it down. His fifth rebound. And once again, Dunn's the only guy going after offensive rebounds, but he's not going to get it against three guys. Strong out front. Gets it back on a reset from Cartier. Clifford from deep. They just have a real good bounce, don't they? On the offensive end, Colorado State, they're moving the ball. They're moving bodies. And just happened to miss that shot, but it was a good set offensively. Just think of how good Colorado State looks for that early stretch to begin the season. 13-1 start. Quarter three from Beekman won't go. Virginia is 2 of 7 from deep and 5 of 27 from the field. They're going to get a break here with Strong dribbling it off of his foot. Provided to stay tuned, ATT to have comes your way next. We'll get you to Atlanta. Adam Lefko, Jay Wright, Candace Parker, Seth Davis. We'll get you their first half analysis and a look ahead to the second half. And Again, the winner of this one moves on to take on Texas. This is Groves. They left him open and they just cannot buy one. And he worked the clock down a two-second differential or so. This is all happening with Stevens with only three points, too. Watch him operate now, though. About a two-second difference. Great matchup. Shot clock, game clock. Yep, good matchup out here. Stevens Whoa. puts it on the deck, lost his footing. Trying to tap it out to Clifford. He will not track it down. That'll be a shot clock violation. And a tough break for Isaiah Stevens as the Rams turn it over under a second left. Let's see if the yeah, officials we'll, put some time back on here. Yeah, they may adjust this. Because right, there was a two-second differential. Really good crew, a lot of veteran experience. Keith Kimball was officiated a couple of Final Fours, two national championships. Also Kelly Pfeiffer and Ed Corliss. Yeah, they put two seconds up. Jimmy, I think you missed your calling as an official. <laughs> At least a stopwatch guy. <laughs> you've, been, you've been right on it tonight. Well, that's the kiss of death. You just <laughs> I'm sure part of Nico Medved has to feel like they should be up by more than 13 points. Yeah. Considering the offensive utility that we've seen from Virginia. Two seconds. It'll be beaten in the inbounder. The hitter. Beekman rises and a fitting end of the first half for Virginia. No field goals for the Cavaliers over the final 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Offensive issues, but that was a different level. What kind of psycho psychology does this Virginia team have now? And meantime, Colorado State up 13 points. A team in the NCAA tournament for only the second time in the last 10 years. You know, the psychology, Spiro, is get a stop and get a bucket. That'll help to start having a little better mental frame as that shot clock winds down again. Stevens, their leader. Dangerous pass, and it's a turnover. Stevens arguing that it was deflected before it hit the bottom of the stanchion. Let's take a look here. It looked like it was off the yeah. the arm of Dunn. They got a pretty good argument. 
So a break for the Cavaliers in the opening seconds of the half, and they can use everything they can get. Well, Beekman and McNeely, 3 of 18 combined. Ah. And Dunn just can't get it to drop. Colorado State, the at-large, out of the Mountain West Conference. 24 and 10 on the season. They went 10 and 8 in conference play. This is Scott inside, working hard. He's going to shoot free throws. And he is in absolutely no hurry when he gets that isolation down there against Dunn, who is a terrific defensive player. But he just has so much time down there, Scott, to operate and use the footwork to get that shot off, get to the line. So Joel Scott. And last year was the Division II Player of the Year, Black Hills State in South Dakota. 67% free throw shooter, misses on the first. Play the official men's bracket game of NCAA March Madness. The Capital One NCAA March Madness men's bracket challenge is here, so get your bracket started right now at play.ncaa.com or in the March Madness live app. One of two for Scott, and it's a 14-point Colorado State lead. Strong on Beekman now. Just really not allowing him, who's ever been guarding him, has not allowed him to get on track to run this offense. And get some of those patented cuts to the basket. Well, can we, Beekman, get this offense energized as they have now missed 17 straight shots? Stevens, pretty floater. And how about the setup beforehand? He really made it seem like he was going to go to his left side and defensively they just fell for McNeely and just had no shot. Here's McNeely. Oh, good Boy, catch. done. One-handed catch. Oh, oh. Out to McNeely who misses wide open. And then done. He's bumped on the rebound. Jimmy, these are wide open looks that the Cavaliers are getting in tight. Meantime, the Mountain West, six teams into the field. Of course, all the conversation about maybe not the respect right. that these teams deserved in terms of seeding Jimmy going into the dance. Uh, Colorado State tonight is getting some respect, that's for sure. The committee took a considerable amount of flack for putting Virginia in at the expense of some of the other teams and... Gonna go. Look, based on what we've seen, that conversation is going to linger unless Tony Bennett's team can turn this around quickly. That was done on a moving screen, too, to send it the other way. And the last time McNeely missed that little 15-foot or two steal, he put his head down a little bit. He's got to shake himself. Forget about the first bunch of shots that he's missed. By the way, that last whistle on Dunn was his second. This is Scott back to the rim, gets it back from Cartier. Double team with Miner coming over. Clifford skips it near side. Strong's three, no. Offensive rebound, Clifford. Strong to the wreck. Uh, Clifford just continues to have a very solid all around game here. Scoring a little bit in the first half, rebounding, defending. He's got McNeely again over that right corner. There's McNeely, corner three, misses everything. Yep, Clifford again, a factor defensively. Clifford. Yeah, he thinks he can score on McNeely. Spins, oh. contact, and it's all Colorado State. Let's take a look now from our AT&T connected cam. And this kid, Nick Clifford, has it all working for the Rams. You talk about impossible shots almost. A little fall away towards the baseline and gets it to adjust. But I think as soon as he caught that ball, he felt he could take McNeely off the bounce, and he did successfully. All Mountain West third team was Clifford this year. The senior Colorado transfer. Six in the conference in rebounds, six in steals. What a player he's been this season for Nico Medved. And the Rams have started the half on an eight 
nothing run. Yeah, just going to say, where is the offense going to come from? Finally, Beekman. And the Virginia contingent finally pleased to get some points. I don't think that was sarcastic to you. I don't know what it was, but yeah. it was something I haven't had much to cheer about. All right. As we get a whistle here before the Clifford corner three on Virginia. And it will be an underneath out of bounds for Colorado State. Looks like Jake Groves is going to check in for Tony Bennett. Jimmy, sometimes as a coach, just can't seem to find the answers. And this is one of those nights for Bennett and his staff. Yep, he just put Groves in as another shooter. That's going to be a tangle with Dunn, not allowing Scott to move towards the basket. Already the fifth team foul against. Virginia, and that's the third personal against Dunn. And he's going to have to sit here at the 16 20 mark, less than four minutes, Jimmy, into the half. Yeah, you don't have a choice. The hope is that you save him, avoid the fourth foul by putting him on the bench, and hopefully you can make a little bit of a run, get something going on the offensive end. But boy, it has been brutally difficult. Nice slip cut. They watch the ball keeps moving. Here comes Clifford. Boy, he's doing everything. He has been the orchestrator. Beautiful dime to Cartier. And Colorado State's lead is 21 points. And this is just a very, very unselfish team. But watch Clifford set it up. Probably had a four shot if he wanted to try to take it, but decides unselfishly to dish it off. Cartier with the finish. It's a Colorado State program that has only won four NCAA tournament games in their program history. In the dance for the second time under Medved. And only the second time in the last ten years. I haven't had too much program success this time of year. Groves. Uh, one of those nights. Virginia is 6 of 35 for the night. And the Rams are just running smoothly right now. So is this guy here handling the ball. Mid-range J from Strong won't go, and the rebound is cleared by Buchanan. Hard to chip your way back into a game like this, Spiro, if you're so methodical on the... Uh, Boy, Beekman trying to pick up the pace. He'll shoot a free throw. As he takes Cartier off the bounce. But, Jimmy, you're right. you got to quicken the pace here. Yep. No choice. If you door cuts and drives, and they've had an answer defensively for just about everything. Only three Virginia players have scored in this game. Beekman, McNeely, and Ryan Dunn. And if they're going to have any chance, Jimmy, of making this thing interesting down the stretch, this kid, Reese Beekman, just get the sense, gonna have to put the team on his back. Well, with those three guys shooting as poorly percentage wise as they are, Colorado State will give them a couple of points here and there, but they're not doing as effectively and efficiently as they normally do. Remember, this Virginia program reached the college basketball mountaintop in 2019, but have not tasted victory in the dance since. Strong move, it's Scott. Boy, does he ever use his frame at 6'7", 225. We've seen him a bunch of times tonight get that fabulous position. Whistle blown at the other end as he picks up a foul in the paint. Let's get more on this kid, Scott, who's really starting to come on over the last couple of weeks with John. All right, well, Spiro, Nico Medved told me before the season that he had a premonition that Scott could be a player after an early season scrimmage against Oregon. His last nine games, over 16 points per game, just under seven rebounds. Ask the coach for some lottery ticket numbers. <laughs> so he was right on the money with that one. He's really turned the corner, proving his coach right. 16.7 rebounds that he's averaged in his previous six entering tonight. Boy, the putback, it's Buchanan. And Beekman had to do everything possible to get through that traffic to get that ball up on the glass so they could get an offensive rebound. So an 18-point game. We come up on 14 minutes left in regulation. 
in a game that has been owned by Colorado State. McNeely hit the deck underneath to get it to Scott. And it's stripped out of bounds by Beekman with nine seconds to shoot. You just wonder how many points Virginia can put up here, you know, to, to catch up. And you got to figure that you're going to see it. Stevens catch and shoot well short. Beekman's going to push. And look at the balance, though. Doesn't have numbers, who's so going to pull up, wait up for Groves, corner three, well short. And this awful Virginia shooting continues. Groves is a 42% three shoot, oh boy. Boy, Scott just wide open, and Clifford dicing him up. Oh, they ever playing smart basketball. Jimmy, this is what they look like at the beginning of the season. Remember, Colorado State jumped out to a 13 and one start. They climbed to as high as 13th in the AP poll before their offense went a little bit south on them there. Beekman on the miss. But boy, do the Rams have that bounce back in their step. They sure do. Even when they miss a shot at the you know offensive end, it's just smooth. And boy, Beekman make that time a little yeah. bit too much. Closing everything down. I mean, they have to resort almost now to like floaters and pull-up jumpers from about seven or eight feet away. Clifford on the step. And contact here against Andrew Rohde. That's going to be the sixth against the Cavaliers. Now we mentioned the, the connection between these two coaches, Nico Medved, Tony Bennett, and also the relationship between Medved and Tony's dad, Dick Bennett who is not here tonight. Nico told us the story. After he got the job, Jimmy, with Furman in 2013, he was introduced to Dick Bennett. They quickly developed a bond that has grown considerably over the years. And Medved went so far as to say he's been my biggest mentor in my coaching career. Think about the emotions. He's gotten close to Tony by extension. Right, exactly. And here they are coaching him against each other on the biggest stage. Yeah, nothing but nice words for coach Bennett and and Tony also meaning Dick Bennett it's interesting just to hear him speak about the ball to them and how much he appreciates their their impact in his life Clifford at uh, the free throw line his terrific night continues there is Nico's wife Erica his daughters Allie and Taylor <laughs> you got to bring the stickers to the game Spiro Everybody who has kids knows that. The late night coloring here in Dayton. <laughs> you didn't bring your coloring books, did you? I have them in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> That's post game activity. Beekman, little pick and roll action. Minor, good footwork. Jordan, well, the Much first look, basket. Yeah, the first set that looked like a set for Virginia there with the slip, getting him the ball and powering his way in. There we go. Nice step in. Miner the steal. Wow. Miner trying to bring some life into Virginia. It's fairly the amazing part of that. I know there was a dunk. I know there was a deflection at half court. How about that scoop up on the run at about six feet away from the basket to pick it up and then dunk it? Very athletic play. Miner, the graduate senior for Tony Bennett. Couple of big... Baskets back to back, and then it is Clifford. Clifford. Yeah, just see Bemba that time with that roadblock underneath, too, to free that lane up along the baseline. Beekman, little step back, Jay Short. And Virginia still in a 19 point hole. Stevens, three pointer, no, and the offensive rebound by Bemba. Likes that little jump hook sometimes. Three seconds. It's a rare mistake. Yep. If they can hold on, winner of this one advances to take on Texas in Charlotte. 
on Thursday night as we get contact here. Strong move to the cup by Jake Groves. But Jimmy, look at Nico Medved's team, Colorado State, and this is the kind of team that checks a lot of the boxes of a squad that can make a deep run. So much experience with upperclassmen. Of course, Isaiah Stevens, who, by the way, hasn't had to do much tonight. You win no. this game if it sticks in this kind of fashion when your number one player barely has to break a sweat. Two for, yeah, two for five from the floor, and you're absolutely right. But, you know, everybody else on the floor has really been contributing, and well, even two missed free throws. They do get themselves an extra possession here. Minor little body bump contact. Mm -hmm. It might have been a bump before the uh, the scrimmage. Jimmy, maybe then. Did they say inadvertent whistle here. Yeah, maybe they did. Good call, Spiro. Second career for you. <laughs> <laughs> Your lip reading has rubbed off on me, Jimmy. <laughs> Here comes Murray into the paint, outside to Groves. He's got to hurry, want to shoot, he'll fire. Wow. Well, it hasn't been his night. As Groves now has missed all six of his shots. Last touch, however, underneath by the Rams. Yeah, and, it's, and a few of them have really been difficult shots. I think that should be Colorado State ball, right? Roy Miner has given them at least something. Right, little, little punch in the second half, so he will shoot a couple of free throws as we go back over to John. Well, Spear, you had mentioned how Colorado State is hoping to get something going by winning this game. A team that has won a game in the first four has also won at least one game in the NCAA tournament in 11 of the last 12 years. Two have went to the final four, VCU in 2011 and also UCLA in 2021. I asked Shaka Smart yesterday if he felt an additional boost of confidence after winning this game, and he said, John, winning creates energy. We had tremendous energy after getting a win under our belt in Dayton. Remember, VCU beat USC here in 2011, went on to win four more games, go all the way to the final four, Spira. Yeah, John, that incredible run. This has been a launching off point for so many teams in the tournament over the years. And why not Colorado State? Yeah, I, I like the balance of their team. He's, he's going to go the other way, Virginia Ball. Jackson stepped out of bounds. Well, how about some of the first four success stories over the years? John just alluded to uh, VCU, of course, Fairleigh Dickinson last year. A lot of people forget FDU didn't win their conference tournament last year. Merrimack did, did, but they weren't it, eligible. They were eligible, yep. Making the transition to Division One, so FDU came in and just <laughs> shot the world. What a story that was last year. Put Teaneck, New Jersey, back on the map. Getting a lot of Jersey flavor tonight from you. McNeely's going to reset into the corner. Groves, and finally... You know, that's what you like to see, though. That, he's a guy who's been obviously struggling all night long, outside, getting contested going to the basket, but he still comes up shooting from the deep corner. Second most threes for Groves on the team this season. And he just saved the layup, too, by pressuring the ball because the cutter was wide open. Jimmy, look up. This is a 15-point game. Cartier open three. And he gets a friendly bounce. Well, just when Virginia was starting to make some inroads. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky, right, with that bounce? Here's McNeely. Playing with a little bit more energy. Groves puts it on the deck. This will be a recent foul against Scott. You're absolutely right, though, Spiro. We, you hope if you're Virginia, you get a good bounce. But Colorado State, watch the bounce they get right here. Nice back spin on that basketball. He's got to carry it over the front rim. Beekman, the inbounder, underneath to Groves. But it's a smart play for Groves, just a dive to the rim. Terrific find by Beekman. I don't think he really had great hands on the ball as he misses another free throw, but he pushed that ball towards the rim to get him an extra free throw right now. 
Now, Grove struggled in the ACC semifinal loss to NC State. No, no struggles have carried over to tonight. One of seven from the field, but the young man trying to fight his way through. And unfortunately, his issues now have slid over to the free throw line. It sure has. Not a bad free throw shooter either at 72%. Wow. And it's Scott at the other end. May have turned his ankle a little bit. Favors that right leg. He's just going to try to grit his way through to the free throw line. Between him and Clifford, they've been, he, both of them have been given Virginia all they can handle. When he look at the way he just comes through, who's going to stop him? They're swinging, they're slapping. They had a little turn. And it looked like that left ankle. Uh, Scott is going to try to grit his way through. Nico Medved told us yesterday he's a kid who plays with a chip on his shoulder, elite teammate who called him. He said he's meaner than a hornet on the court, <laughs> but just a great kid. First year in the program, four years at Division II Black Hills State in South Dakota in the shadows of Mount Rushmore. And never, I think literally. Uh, yeah, never underestimate injuries when I'm watching a game, but I think it's going to take a little more than that to get him out of this game, don't you think? Indeed. So much grit to that kid's game. And he's given the Rams a 20-point lead. Oh, they keep going back to Groves over here in the corner. McNeely's been quiet. Beekman knifes in, and he goes glass. So they're seeing the ball go through the hoop a little bit more on a regular basis, Virginia. But, but it seems like Colorado State just keeps answering as we're seeing these double-team efforts. Corner three, a little bit short from Clifford, and this will be a loose ball foul against Jake Groves. And that was Scott working against two Virginia players on the right side. He'll be going to the line. One-on-one -on -one opportunity. Now puts Virginia over the limit. By the way, Beekman, that last basket becomes the first Cavalier to reach double digits, Jimmy, at the 8-17 mark of the second half. But you know, Tony Bennett looking down that bench just doesn't have many options. The other part of that equation, though, to get to that 11 points, he's 4 for 15. So it's more than a work in progress. Just got to keep battling. There's still enough time for Virginia, you know, to make a little run, but with their style, it's very difficult. There you go. Keep driving it. Well, Groves has the green light. Just can't get it going. One of eight is Groves. And Virginia as a team shooting 25% for the night. Here comes Scott into the paint. And another one and one coming up for Colorado State. And their prep work for Virginia, the way they've just slowed them down totally on the offensive side of the floor. Well, if you're a team upset with your seed going into the tournament, this is the kind of response you're looking for. If you're Nico Medved, scrappy team, you catch this group on the wrong night, Jimmy. Yeah, they can punch you right in the mouth. It's exactly what's happened tonight to Virginia so far. Yeah, and he also mentioned about the seed, you know, seeds. It's you have to play everybody sooner or later, right? You got to go through quality teams in the tournament. But they have a lot of good things packaged together on this team. Wow. McNeely is now two of thirteen from the field. And two of six from three. And Beekman four of 15, and Groves one of eight. Not going to get it done. And they just don't have enough firepower for McNeely to have this kind of a shooting night. Boy, that pretty ball movement continues. They locate Scott, and they are picking him apart. How often have we spoken about Scott with the way he's moving without the basketball? There's the cut. Go to the basket and just finishes it off in a hurry. Boy, the timing is so good. How about this line from Scott? 21 points, 9 rebounds. He's done his damage at the free throw line. Young man stepping onto the big stage, and he is not wilted under the bright lights.
As we get a whistle at the other end, Beekman trying to force things. This one is on Stevens, his third personal. And a one and one here for Reese Beekman. What a sensational year for Beekman. A senior from Milwaukee, all ACC second team, the defensive player of the year in the ACC for a second straight year. One of the premier assist men in the country, 13th in assists nationally. And it was the only returning starter from last year also. But they've just you know, not double teamed him, but two guards have switched on him and played a man-to-man, -man and they've just shut him down collectively. Jimmy, that was the other thing that Tony Bennett mentioned in our conversation. You know, Bennett, not a guy who makes excuses, but he just said there was so much newness with us early in the year. Right. Beekman, the only guy who had gotten real experience last year as a starter and a frontline player. He eventually figured things out, but this has been ugly so far for the Cavaliers in Dayton. Rams using that entire shot clock. Clifford leans in and creates some space. Just brilliant. Their front line is so good at that too, Spiri. Notice the way he just stood his ground for a second, almost like a beat. Count to a second, see what the defender's going to do, and then make your move. It's the same thing that Scott has been doing underneath the basket also. Watch this little hesitation now. He gets, he gets himself into the lane, not in a hurry. Little timing, little push in the bump there with the hip, and then softly finishes the shot off. Andrew Rohde, just no match for him on the box. Murray's going to get him reset. This is Rohde. Wow. Three. Too much. That was a heavy one. Mm. Well, Tony Bennett knows he's going to have to find some shooters next year. This offense that has been the major headline for Virginia rearing its ugly head again on the biggest night of their season. Lake. On a turnaround putback attempt by Scott. And the Rams come up empty. One of the few things Scott didn't really finish. <laughs> Everything else he's been completing. Joel Scott has the eighth double-double in school history in an NCAA tournament game. Nick Clifford is going to join him. Clifford is one rebound away from a double-double. And those two have completely stolen the show for the Rams. And when he was playing Division II, he had 46 double-doubles, so. One and one here for Beekman as we go over to John. Well, Spiro, you know, you look obviously at the chemical makeup of Colorado State's rotation. You've been talking about Joel Scott. Cartier also a non-D1 originally, and Joel Palmer comes from D3. Nico Medved believe there's such a greater appreciation for the Division I experience when you get guys, which you can now obviously through the transfer portal, from people who didn't start at non-Division I opportunities. That Troika in particular, very grateful to be at Colorado State and playing in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and they start to talk about guys wanting to prove things and the three of those guys are trying to prove that they belong and converts to the weak side he's always found a spot to be able to catch and go 21 points 8 of 12 from the field incredible amount of efficiency by Scott well, the Colorado kid on Nico Medved's roster As the Rams head coach has pushed all the right buttons here tonight. Nice to have guys on the floor right now with Virginia pressing up a bit that can handle, make plays out of it. Watch for a backdoor cut eventually out of this set. This is Clifford into the corner for Lake, and that's a three. Look at the enthusiasm over there on the bench, too. Once that ball went through the net, every single guy sitting on the bench, the players got up and applauded. Wow. Beekman, a little bit of contact, no whistle. Clifford, the official say, stepped out of bounds underneath. Uh, Virginia is going to retain here as we cross the five-minute mark. Well, Colorado State group, maybe... A little upset about their seating, Jimmy, but you know, these are kids. They forget about it quickly. And all they're doing is thinking ahead now. You're just marching on right now. <laughs> no
No pun intended, but maybe so. The potential Thursday date with Texas. As they look to be moving on to Charlotte. Little turnaround shot. Jordan Miner in tight. Texas will be a nice matchup with this team, but you get the sense that they're not going to back down from many teams. You just think of that Mountain West Conference, six teams in the tournament. It's not an easy league to play in. Is this Colorado State team battle tested? Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Trying to bring the house down. Woo. My goodness, that missed by a fraction. Watch him coming in on the left side. Just got hit. Right there. Boy, give well, Scott, that would have been a beauty. Give Joel Scott credit for going up. That takes courage right there. And that was a potential frustration dunk for Ryan Dunn. Oh boy, that just barely got there. So there's Bennett in front of that Virginia bench. Again, national champion 2019, Jimmy. You just think of the success that he's had. Two-time national coach of the year. And uh, you start to look now at the results in the NCAA tournament. Last year, four seed in the South, upset by Furman. Of course, the, the historic loss back in 2018, yeah. the year before the national championship. Well, it, well, it's that style, too, that unless you really have your shooters making the shots, you know, as we've seen here, it's just so hard to get back into a game when you get down 10-plus, and they're down more than that now, obviously. Colorado State with a 22-point lead in what has been a blowout. Wow. Well, they've had dozens of open shots. As much as you want to give the Rams credit for their defense, yeah. Virginia's got just a ton of open looks. But this yeah. has been a level of futility that uh, we haven't seen in a long time in the tournament. Look at this. Oh, pretty. Top cut right off the middle of the, the middle of the floor. Clifford double-double as they are picking them apart. Yeah, I hate to say it this way, Spiro, but this is one of those games for Virginia. You just keep looking up that clock and let it disappear. Watch out. Just an awful way for a year to end. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, when it, it 20, 23 and 10, 13 and 7 in the ACC, and just unfortunate with the throw up a stinker. Again, sometimes you're a victim of your own success. There's a little bit of that with Tony Bennett, Virginia. As Clifford, the relentlessness continues. Nico Medved's going to start to empty his bench, and they can start to look ahead. <laughs> yeah, but a little fun. At the uh, expense of their opponents here tonight. So Nico Medved will start to empty his bench, as will Tony Bennett here. Jackson got a hand on it, knocks it away from Harris. And as we start to look ahead, the big bracket. On the Midwest side of things, Texas awaits. St. Peter's have another run. <laughs> My goodness. Jimmy, I have to say, this is has to be the most wide open field that we've had. And with some of the teams at the top, you, know, you just think of Purdue's obviously recent term in history, some of right. that issues when they've had the one seed is this finally the year that they break through but it just seems like even the teams at the top are all vulnerable yeah i'd have to still lean in fairly hard on kinetic to true though you know just well-rounded yeah, connecticut clearly appears to be yeah. a team to beat certainly a favorite to repeat yeah. after just an incredible run last year they, they are a real team you know
John, what do you think? Well, guys, I don't want to obviously start agreeing with everything Jim says on the first day, but I'm with my uh, counterpart here from New Jersey. I still think Connecticut's <laughs> the best team. And I'm, I think, you know, too, Jim, when you look at things defensively for UConn, many coaches in the Big East, for as good as Adamo Sanongo was a year ago at carving out space, playing in just changes so much for the other team's offense because as a couple of coaches told me last week, you can't post up, you can't drive. They're much more balanced than last year. And again, guys, this is a big thing we have to remember. UConn doesn't have to get on a plane yep. before the Final Four. It's two games in Brooklyn. You handle business there. You have a quick stop in stores. And then it's a 90-minute drive from stores to Boston for the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. So they have a tough region, but I'd be shocked if the Huskies are not in Arizona. Interesting point, too, because you're right about Klingon. The one thing about him, too, that I would add to that, John, is that his his footwork and his mobility is better than I think most people recognize until you've seen him a couple of times. He's big. There's no question about it, but he gets around and keeps getting people out of the lane at the right time. Yeah, it is all set up for Connecticut, there's no doubt, as their beat begins in Brooklyn. Bond kicks out. This is Harris off target. The three-point struggles are going to continue here right to the bitter end. This is going to be the seventh game this season for Virginia in which they have failed to score 50 points. Whistle blown at the other end. This is one of those nights, and I've been there, Spiro, where as a player, you know, when you play well, the first thing you want to do after the game's over, you want to grab that stat sheet and say, oh, you know what, I was 6 for 10 today with a couple of assists. I don't know if anybody on the Virginia team is really going to be grabbing that stat sheet and looking at it, except for the coaches. Just have to feel for them. Again, just yeah, yeah, it's a, a horrible feeling. Tough way to end on this kind of a stage. In the meantime, Colorado State with Jack Payne here at the free throw line. Redshirt freshman, Boise native. Seven appearances this season for Nico Medved. Love this moment. So to get some of those guys at the end yeah. of the bench and run on this kind of a stage. And now Luke Murphy will check in, another redshirt freshman. And this is what it's all about because you don't know the next game, Spiro, whether or not you'll be able to do this as a coach. So you take this opportunity to give these guys a taste of being on the NCAA floor. This is Bond elevates. And the rebound is controlled by Colorado State. And right now, Virginia's at an even 25% field goal percentage. A lot on Tony Bennett's mind and a lot to think about. And what has been just an awful night for them here yep. in eight. You know, they averaged 64 points a game, so a little indication of how they were snuffed out by Colorado State with only 40 on the board right now. Mm. So whistle here with 30.6 remaining. Colorado State will slowly start to look ahead and think about their... Thursday matchup with Texas up and down year for Texas, but finally healthy they Won three of their last four in conference play I Think of Dylan to sue that dominant run that he had last year hurt He is healthy What a fun matchup that is going to be potentially sure in Charlotte on Thursday between those two teams Yeah, and coming off this game here where you can build a lot of confidence and in many different ways with Colorado State starting at the defensive end you look at those 42 points now you know but difficult evening for Virginia feel for their players putting a long year of practice and hard work and just didn't have it tonight Colorado State owning Virginia and they are going to taste some success in March Madness once again the Rams get their first NCAA tournament win under Nico Medved as they'll inbound here with point six and it's over Colorado State dominates Virginia 
and they punch their ticket to Charlotte. And a Thursday date with Texas.